I'm going to show you three different models we are using for our virtual university. Since we have different public, different participants, and different students, we have to design different models for that. When we started our programs, we were looking for different models, and we realized that more of the courses were designed on the base that the student is self-directed, self-guided. But the truth is the Mexican are not. And the rest of the Latin American, I can say, is, are not too. So we need to adapt the models so that we have tutors. And the tutors are the person behind the computer that are following the participant during the course. The course is designed in a sense that a participant can learn from it without any help. But we have help. And we have the tutors for every 50 students. And this tutor, what does is to contact the participants by mail, sometimes by telephone, and sometimes in person. And he tried to help him in go into the course and avoid dropping the courses. So this is important to say. Uh, another thing is that we need to contextualize the content. The people from the companies don't want theory. They want to be very practical with the courses. So we need that the content from the course is very um, direct what, what they are doing in the company. Uh, as I was telling, we have the tutors, so we have very intensive follow-up of participants. Another thing that we have found about uh, the continuing education program is that it was a very good opportunity to share knowledge between the participants from one company. And I'm talking about best practices. Uh, I want to show you a course, just to have a, an example. What we do is we cut the professor's teaching, and we use presentation like this with the more important ideas. And what we do is we cut the conference in small pieces. And what the participants can do in here is to select the slide they need, or to select if they want the professor to move to a different situation, like this. When it starts, the professor was, was talking, and the information here was exactly what the professor was saying. But the student can change the slides, so he can focus on some concept that he doesn't understand. This is the way to present content. But it's important for me to say that for us, this is not important, but the activity or activities the students do, do after this. So this is just a way to present content. Just as we use graphics or we use another things. But after that, the students and the participant has to do activities. And those activities are the way they learn. To show you the third model. So I was talking about uh, formal education, then continuing education. But now I want to talk about the rural areas and the program we have for people who are in the forest, who are in the desert, who are out of the cities. And these people are sometimes people who has not electricity and some people who was the first time to use a computer. So of course, we need to design a different kind of course. And these are called communitarian uh, model. And for that, well, you can see, these programs are designed for communities located far from traditional learning centers and require technology equipment. We call it in Spanish CCAs, Communitarian Centers of Learning. And uh, we have, at this moment, almost 400 of these places. And we have three in the United States. 
And the reason we have three in the United States is because of the migrants. Some of them are people without education. So we put these centers in the United States so that people can go and get some studies. And then we have one in Latin America, which is now in Guatemala. How we do this? We combine different technologies. We send the internet by satellite. So what we do is with the satellite, we send the internet. So these are the places located in the different areas. And we do this with the government. We ask the government to build these small classrooms and to give computers. And our, our responsibility is to deliver the courses. Then we need a third part. And the third part was the telecommunication uh, company from Mexico who helped us with the transition of this. But given the internet and computer to the people was not enough, so we need to have another role, which is a people in this center or in this small classroom that help the participants with the computer. And we call this the facilitator. The facilitator has a profile. He's a teaching vocation. He has a service attitude. He has to be proactive. And he's committed to the development of the community. We look for this facilitator from the communities. And uh, what they do is uh, they help, as you can see here, this is a real picture. They help the participants because, as I told you, some of them is the first time using a computer. When we start these programs, we get a lot of critics because uh, a lot of people in Mexico didn't believe that the people without education can handle the computer. But the surprise is that these people has not to pass through normal classes, 